I am Lucien Downs. I am a Virgin Islander. I am a Crucian. I am a son of the Caribbean. Um, <clears throat> my family has been here for like centuries. You know, I um, go back to the the times of the Tainos and the Indians, and I have roots all through that. So that's why I say I'm a son of the Caribbean. You know, um, I'm an artist. I'm an entrepreneur. I can't say philanthropist, I don't give away money. But um, I'm a community servant, I would say. I used to run two stores for Pearl Paint, which was the largest um, artist stores in the United States. My store in Atlanta was 22,000 square feet. The one in New Jersey was 18,000 square feet. So can you imagine like a, kind of like a Walmart for arts? I mean, it was huge. You know, if you're an artist, artist, you were shopping at Pearl. So um, during my tenure as the GM, like, you know, I used to get like a lot of free, um, you know, just different products that they would want me to test out. And, you know, I was just like, okay, I don't paint. So, I mean, I've always loved art, loved it, photography, um, everything you can name. I just loved art. But when I was young, I used to sketch and then I was just like, mm, this is not looking like how it's supposed to look, you know? And then it kind of discouraged me. And then, you know, as you get into your teenage years, you start working and running down woman and so, so, you know, you kind of, um, <laughs> you know, kind of, you know, get away from that. The funny thing was, is the way how my love of art came full circle and me wanting to be an artist. So um, the company that I was working for before, they downsized and so I had to go look for another job. So it was like, I think it was four months in and then, you know, I had to step down from my managerial usually thing that I used to do. I became a floor manager for this location. And then within like five months, I became the GM, you know, cause the other manager decided to leave and with my expertise in this, you know, management field, they, you know, made me the manager. And um, I didn't even know that that was gonna be the start of my, you know, my forward movement in the art world. So I started playing around with materials, reading books, doing YouTube. Um, and also like my, all of my employees, like they either went to SCAD or they went to the Alana Institute of Art. Um, so we would do like different little, you know, bring in your artwork day, like on Fridays. And we will all, you know, do critiques and this is good, this is not good, we like how this is, this needs more depth, more colors, more different things. So then henceforth, like that helped to build me as an artist. And also too, I had like a tight relationship with different like artists um, and instructors that would come in. You know, we will have conversations. I used to have my artwork up in my office. So I was like, hey, come back here. Let me tell me, tell me what you think. And they will come in and like, oh, really? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, give me, you know, some really good in-depth um, feedback, which helped me to like actually get into my first gallery within six months of painting. You know, and from then it just took off. Um, it's been like an amazing journey. I mean, I think I've accomplished so many things within my last 13 years of being an artist, which is a short lifespan of being an artist, because some artists have been artists from since they were like, you know, nine, 10 years old, and just come straight up. So to me, it's been like, uh, you know, I kind of blossomed a little late, but um, I think that the things I've been able to accomplish thus far has been like amazing. It's a passion. I think it's something that's like within you. So, so let me tell you, um, just in case, I know you're a creative as well, right? So whenever you go into a depressed state, it's because you're not creating. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes like, you know, um, being empathic and different things or be, being very sensitive to the, to the world around you, you go into a depressive state, it's like you don't want to paint. At least you think you don't want to paint. 
and then you don't paint for a long period of time and you just spiral into depression. But from the time you start painting and from the time you start creating, all that dissipates. So it's like, art is like my life blood. It's like, it, it has to flow. And if it doesn't flow, then I go down a dark path. It's like the creator telling me like, I gave you this talent, so you need to use it. I ain't gonna take it from you, but I'm gonna force you to use it, you know? So, and that in itself is showing me that the path that I'm on is the correct path to take. This one is called Flow of the Bambula. Um, I wanted to show people the way how I create movement within my work. And this is a master's thing. So I wanted people to show, I wanted to show people how I masterfully did that, you know, because this is one of my main things that I do is to create movement, show textures, show different layers. So that was something that I really wanted to show and that's why I chose that painting. I think that bambula dancing is a spiritual something. Um, I'm very, like, my work is very spiritual in nature. Um, it also has like this ethereal feel and I wanted to convey that. Um, so that piece kind of conveys everything that I wanted to like show in the mastery of something. Hence for the master class, you know, it shows you my use of resin, my use of layering. Um, also like the way how, you know, it kind of fades in and fades out, you know, to give you that kind of feeling of, um, like I'm here, but I'm like in some kind of spiritual form, you know? Also, you know, with the pigments and, and along with the dress, it shows the flow and the movement. So, you know, flow and movement is very important to my art because I love the way how it, um, how it, like, you know, it just, it gives, it gives the picture like life. It's just not like, okay, her dress this day, you know? I want you to feel like her dress is being moved. So the pigment does that, it gives that, that, that feeling. And then like with the different layering of the, um, the paint, it gives that appearance of flowing as well. It's a great feeling. I think that um, like in the States, at the time when I was making my, um, when I was like growing in the art world, it felt good to be celebrated. But to me, like being like uh, in your home space and people are like, really like, yo, you're doing a good job. We appreciate what you're doing for the community. We appreciate what you're doing for the art world. I mean, that to me is like, it's tenfold more than any kind of appreciation I guess stateside. It's also great when you go over to your sister islands and you go to the movies, and people are in the movies like, wait, you, you're that artist, dude? I'm like, wow, St. Thomas? <laughs> you know? You go over to St. John on the ferry, and people are like, wait a minute, you don't want me to do that? You're that guy from St. Um, I'm from St. Croix who does the paintings? I was like, yeah. But it feels good, because then you know that, you know, that your, your art is being appreciated, and people are really taking like a, and it's not even about like, it's about me but it's still about the artist community growing. You know, um, I felt that when I first moved back here, the artist realm was like dead. Nothing was really happening, you know, and then me and a few other artists, you know, started doing things and the art world is waking up, you know, and people are learning to be more appreciative of art. And once again, that's, that to me is the, is the, is the, is the biggest thing about, um, you know, moving back home and getting the appreciation from my community. You know, it's helping the young ones to learn about art as well, to appreciate art, you know, to be, to, to also indulge in art as in, you know, painting, sculpting. And not just because I don't, I don't, I don't want every kid to be an artist, but I want to be, I want every kid to be a creative thinker. And I believe that art is the catalyst for that. It's kind of sad because I really and truly didn't used to, even now I still do it. I don't like put my face up 
on my website. You know, I only started recently putting up my face on my, um, on my social media. You know, because I didn't want you to come to my page to see who I was. I wanted to come to my page and see my work. Focus on that. Don't focus on the color of my skin. You know what I'm saying? Um, in the States too, like, I wouldn't come to my own events. I would just let the gallery owner deal with it. And we sold. Once I'm there, it's just like, you know? And I'm just like, wow, dude. You know, I would do festivals and stuff. People would be like, oh my God, like, this is amazing. But you're, you, are you like the security guard or something? Are you this and that? Big man, it was just, listen, uh, I had this big friggin' show in Atlanta, the man. It was like amazing, down on Peachtree. And um, it's amazing space, man. And this woman came in, she bought one of my floral pieces. Um, she said, oh, I want to meet the artist. When I walk in, she's like, oh. Oh, I, I, I couldn't see you doing something like this. But I had like a black piece with this woman's silhouette. I could see you doing something like that. And I watched Patrick and I'm just like, and I was like, I hope you got her money already. Cause I'm like done. <laughs> you know? And I was like, ma'am, it was nice meeting you. You have a wonderful day. And I walk out the gallery, you know what I'm saying? And this is the kind of stuff that in the States that you deal with. You know, to me, um, I'd rather come to my soil, my native soil, and I'd rather struggle. You know, the people on St. Croix, you know how we can be, you know, but the thing about it is, is like perseverance and letting people them know that you're not going anywhere and you're going to fight for what you want and you're going to make the right connections to make things happen. You know, and if you can't, if somebody is not willing to work with you, then you find somebody who is, or you do it yourself. You know, I think a lot of times artists, they don't make it to their full capacity because they don't know how to network. They don't know the business side of it. Whereas I know the business side and we will have conversations and I would see directions in which I want to take art. I would see directions where I want to take my work and I go that way. So um, I think living in the States was like, it was, it was a high. But at the same time, like, I really low because then you see the full view of racism. Um, which, of course, us growing up here, we never really, you know, dealt with that per se. But um, for you to put your creation out there and for these same racist people to love your stuff until they find out who created it, then everybody's mindset just changed. You know, and that's sad. That's really... and. And it really to put me in this kind of like depressed feeling because I'm just like, what do you do about that? But it's not for you to do. It's for them to catch up to you. Because guess what? If you're doing things great that they like, eventually they could probably put that behind them and still fall in line. Some of them wouldn't. But then that should not stop you from doing what you need to do, which is create and use your God's given talent.